Hello everybody and welcome to Cape Rugby TV, Wednesdays at 9. As usual, we bring you the very best of uh, club rugby. Varsity Cup, we're looking at that, we're looking at the Community Cup, we're looking at Super 15, of course our Super Brew features in the mix, and we are happy to have you along. Right, so let's get things started on the panel with me this evening, as usual, Morgan Newman. Hello, Morgs. How's it, Chip? How are you doing? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, it's been a nice uh, rugby weekend. It seems like the fever is starting to pick up. Super 15 is on the go. Yeah, I know. It has been an exciting weekend, I think. You know, Super 15 has started. As, this, as they're talking about the real Super 15 starts this weekend with the South African teams. Yeah. So, yeah, exciting times all around. Jerome, welcome. Good night, JP. Mr. H. You can't wait to get to Super Brew predictions. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. Let's not kill the fact that we've got to speak <laughs> about other matters. I know what's coming up this evening. All right, I know where you guys are going with Super Brew. Uh, you've been well? Yes, sir. Yes. Fantastic. Absolutely. Right, so um, let's, let's kick it off straight away. It is Varsity Cup time and as usual we first take a look at the Varsity Shield. Lots of exciting games and of course uh, we've got the Varsity Shield coach on the team with us and uh, a person who has played in the Varsity Cup, Mr. Morgan Newman. Let's first start off with taking a look at some of those results over the weekend. University of Fort Hare, at least not over the weekend, on Monday night, Fort Hare up against UWC. It was a one-point win for um, Fort Hare over UWC. They had to travel all the way to Alice. And then TUT uh, lost for them 24-16 um, against CUT. Jerome, let's start off with you on that one there. Uh, you know, normally we would have had somebody from Varsity Shield or Varsity Cup on the show with us, yeah? I mean, you're coaching at UWC at the moment, one point loss for them. What have you heard? Yeah, JP, it's bad because they really needed to, to win away from home. And uh, I thought that um, they were really up for, for, for this game. Mm. And right to the end, uh, five minutes before, uh, before time, they were still leading 23-20. 20, um, so I thought um, they had this game. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, two penalties later in the last uh, um, few minutes, um, killed the game for them. And still, I've spoken to Peter De Villiers and... Uh, uh, he said that they've scored a try at the end and the ref just didn't award it, so unfortunately for them. Well, I don't know. I've heard that there's a little bit of violence up at Fort Hare at the moment. Maybe the ref was a little bit nervous. Oh, yeah. anyway, let's, leave that <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about the ref there then. Uh, so, so, yes, we have a situation there. Uh, we, we've, said in, we've said before that these away wins are critically important because they are so difficult. But, I mean, you've got to give credit then to you, to you dubs for going to Alice. It's a long flight, it's a long drive, you get there, and we've heard that Fort Hare is absolutely jam-packed. Um, I mean, so, so well done to the guys, even though they came away with, uh, you know, only a one-point margin loss. Yeah, and uh, um, one good thing for them out of this is they got one point out yeah. of the game. So that's, that's, that, that's also helped a bit to close the gap a bit between uh, CUT and UWC. So they're pretty much still in there. Talking about CUT, of course, they had a win over TUT over the we weekend. Um, so, or at least I keep saying over the weekend. I keep thinking rugby's on the weekend, but it's actually not. It's on Monday nights. It's Varsity Cup and Varsity Shield. But when we talk Varsity Cup, folks, of course, you know, it's the Shield is part of the Varsity Cup. So don't, don't think we're only talking about Varsity Cup. You know, specifically, we're interested in the Varsity Shield teams here, uh, UWC and the Varsity Cup, Martys and, and uh, uh, UCT. So... Uh, right, so if we look at CUT, they again came away with a win, 24-16 um, over uh, China University of Technology. That will, you know, put them in a situation where they're staying on top of the log. Yeah, um, they, um, the informed side uh, in the varsity is sealed at the moment, and they still have to come to UWC, where you know it's, it's not easy uh, for them to or anybody to come to UWC and take yeah. points there. So that will be a decider, but UWC also playing uh, next Monday against TUT. When TUT is um, bottom of the lock, which they also need points. And um, so that's going to be a decider. Uh, UWC must take points there or win that game there. Um, and then CUT come back to, to UWC. So I think that UWC, uh, T, CUT, they pretty much the teams that, that's in the running for first and second. Well, I think at this time of the season, obviously, if you're well placed, uh, Morgs, I mean, if you're well placed at this time, it, it, look, it's not a normal season like club rugby. Uh, it's only, I think, um, 10 games or 10 weeks, 9 weeks. 
at this part of the game, you've already played four games, there's about four or five games left. If you're sitting at the top of the log, you've got a good chance to make it through to the win. Yeah, look, James, I think that's very important, obviously, guys. Uh, you know, there's sort of that sort of uh, jockeying for, for positions at this time of the year. Mm. And obviously, with three or four games down, or, you know, some teams, have, see some, some teams have, are on their way to play five games, that's, that's, that's an important stage where, where teams are really going to, you know, be battling it out. And by the looks of things, COT are, are running away with it at the moment. So the battle for second is, is, is pretty hot with, with, um, with, as you see, the UWC on 11 and, um, you know, the University of Ford here on, on 10. So it's going to be interesting to, to see. But I think with UWC having, playing the, the team that's bottom of the log next week, it's a, it's, a, it's a vital game to take some points. Let's take a look at the logs, folks, um, so you can get a, a bit of an idea as to where the clubs are standing at the moment, or at least the university are standing at the moment. And there you see CUT are firmly on the top in, uh, with 17 points. UWC in second place, they've played four, they've lost two. Of course, CUT's advantage there is the fact that they've won all four of their games so far. But UW's, FNB UWC on 11 points in second place. Fort Harris on uh, 10 points in third place. UKZN is on eight points in fourth place. And TUT, well, it's not going very well for them. They've played four, they've lost four, and uh, only three points. So I think we can already see the, the split between the top and the bottom over there. Of course, we're gonna come back with an ad break. And when we come back, we've got a clip for you on uh, Ike's against UJ, and of course, Marty's against NMMU. And we'll take a look at the results and the log, as well as some of the fixtures a little bit later in the Varsity Cup. Back with you in a moment. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westenberg. Like the new Super Ace One Ton Mini Truck. Our special introductory offer begins at only 109995 from only 1499 per month. With a 60,000 kilometer three year maintenance plan, the longest load body in its class, power steering, and so much more. The Super Ace Mini Truck is powered to take your business places. To find out more, SMS the words Super Ace to 320. 10 and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. Get more fantastic deals on Evox products at this game now. Grab a 1.9 kilogram Lean Pro Diet Shake plus 30 free GCC diet caps for only $3.99. With 21 grams of protein and only 2 grams of carbohydrates, Lean Pro is perfect for your low carb diet. Build lean muscle mass with 2.6 kilograms of amino whey protein for only $4.49.95 and get a free creatine HCL. Get down to your nearest just came now for more great deals on Evox products. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Hello everybody, welcome back to Cape Rugby TV. Of course, Wednesdays at 9. I hope you're joining us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. And if you want to check out more from the Varsity Cup, you can also find them on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Varsity Cup. All your results, logs and fixtures. And don't forget to visit the website www.varsitycup.co.za you'll see what's happening in the world of Varsity Shield and Varsity Cup lots of action and entertainment there some fantastic pictures and videos and of course all of those fantastic um, uh, auctions and so forth for the sake of raising charity very much for that campaign to keep the aggro on the field which is a campaign that is directed against um, women abuse right so let's take a look now at the results in the Varsity Cup and there you see it, Shimlers against Tux. Tux coming away with a victory there, 23 points to 12 over Shimlers. Marty's, it was a good win for them on Monday night, 13-8 over NMMU. Vitz against uh, Pucker, 25-71. Good win there for the Pucker. And it didn't quite go the way of Ikees over the weekend. UCT going down to uh, UJ um, at the Green Mile. So home game for Ikees not going their way, 42 points to 26. That was a... Shocking result there in actual fact. Morgs, um, let's start at the bottom there. Ike's U UJ, uh, it's not the kind of result that I might have been looking for. No, James, I must say, I mean, you don't want to go down to, to, to the Green Mile and, and, and get a loss. And UCT were fairly confident when they had them on the show two, about two weeks ago. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, look, it's, um, there, there's lots of conditions that UJ had to come down and, and, and face. But again, look, 42 26, Ike's are clearly not doing, clearly doing something wrong at the moment. So they've got some hard work, I think. They're not sitting very well in the table either, so they've really got to pull out one or two big wins away from home to, to get themselves back into contention for, for playoffs. Don't forget, folks, we are joined by uh, Sevens, Springbok Sevens player Paul Delport a little bit during, uh, later during the show. He's going to tell us 
a little bit more about those HSBC sevens. Of course, Pauli was at the match between um, UCT and uh, UJ on Monday night, and uh, we'll get his insights. So I think Pauli was a former um, UCT player himself. Uh, been playing quite a few clubs, but we'll catch up with Paul Delport, legendary sevens player, going to join us on the show in a couple of minutes' time. Jerome, um, I have UCT though, they've got quite a lot of injuries at the moment. I see Levi Wollendahl wasn't in the squad, mm. so they had to switch captains as well. So, a difficult environment at the moment for, for UCT. Yeah, we were talking earlier about um, um, the, your squad and how to manage your squad and things like that. Unfortunately for them, is uh, they have a few injuries. I mean, the first game they had injuries and they've got injuries now also. So it's a bit difficult for them. I mean, losing your home games, then you're pretty much uh, in big trouble. So I think it's, and also the squad, uh, um, their squad is not the same as the previous, the previous years. They're busy building. They've got a few youngsters there. So it's going to take time for them to get up there again. All right, uh, Mr. H, you were of course at the, at the match, Marty's uh, against NMMU. Yes, and it was a fantastic match. Did they have a jump in Castle? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we never know if they've, if they've got a jump in Castle. <laughs> Mr. H, the first thing we need to ask the games is, uh, it doesn't matter who's playing checks. All right, there's a jump in Castle, there's a point kick course, there's a bright flash. Okay, this is a good game. <laughs> no, as usual, you know, fantastic crowd. Yeah. And the match was in the balance right until the last whistle you know yeah and the Madibas was putting so much pressure on the Marty's try line and they Marty's had to defend with 14 men only because uh, Ranil Hugo was yellow carded in that last seven minutes but uh, I think for me the the, the highlight of the match was uh, Osaman's tackles in the first minute he tackled his opposite number um, Gareth Bailey. Hang on, I'm just going to stop you there. Is this Os Hamman? Is this Stefan Hamman? I don't know. Yes, I know just this chappy, this chap in standard nine was playing for Paul Ruiz and was weighing 155 yeah. kilos. Yeah. Stefan Hamman. I believe he's lost a little bit of weight. Yeah, but right. he's big. He's a monster. I mean, he was playing Craven Week and I was watching him take six guys over the try line with him. <laughs> He lost he two Ks. He lost two kilos. <laughs> yeah. He's dropped, he certainly he's dropped some just weight. 128 now. He, he's weighing, uh, he tackled his opposite number in the second minute. And that guy, you know, he was confused for a yeah. long time. Yeah. Just as he was getting ready, he collided with us again. Oh, no. And I think he was out of the game. But then the third tackle, Haman and uh, his co-partner, um, his Lock Alistair, yeah. For Mark, yeah, they tackled the uh, uh, Brian Shibanga, I think it was the flank, and he lights went out. They carried him off the field. So it's nice to see a big prop like that going into all you know into all those tackles, and he did a lot of work, you know, yeah. carrying the ball up and so on. But he's he's really something. And then, of course. The Madibas has got an exceptionally good pack of forwards. Fantastic name, that though. Yeah. Nelson Mandela University. The and Madibas. they've got the nick the <laughs> nickname of... Yeah. And they... they, they Madibas. Leda Wittkop Flank. Albertus de Swart. Yeah. Oh, we really kept the Martis uh, occupied, you know. And then, uh, you know, I think the problem with the Martis in the beginning was that they were a bit... The, the halfbacks were too pensive. Right. They, you know, they took a long time to decide what they were going to do. Yeah. The two wings hardly got the ball. In fact, I think one, once when the, the wing got the ball towards the end, he actually was a bit asleep and he didn't know okay. what to do. But an outstanding game. Fantastic uh, game then, obviously, from Marty's. Um, for those of you that managed to watch that, I'm sure you'd have enjoyed some good quality rugby. We managed to get you a couple of pictures. These are just some of the highlights uh, from the Varsity Cup of the match between Ikees and UJ and Martis and the Madivas. Let's watch some of the guys in action, some of the action shots, big hits.
There you go, folks. Some uh, fantastic action shots there from Marty's against uh, the Madibas. And, of course, uh, UCT against Ikey's. Um, Jerome, at the moment, I think we must be quite happy with the fact that we've got some forwards there. I mean, we've got this Osaman, as Mr. H was saying. He's got some, some serious size. We've got um, Oli Kebel at UCT and Chris Heiberg at UCT. These are guys that potentially could play for Western Province one day. Yeah, I mean, Oli, Oli already played province under 21 and he played Vodacom Cup last year, Oli Kebel. Yeah. And um, Os Haman is also one of the guys who came through the structures. And also another guy that you didn't mention, Alistair for Mark. He's the, for me, he's the outstanding prop in this competition. Right. The amount of work that he puts in. And he's also one of the former under 21 in um, uh, Vodacom Cup players at province. So yeah, we've got um, th there's one thing that we don't lack in um, was in the past it was a big problem. The big guys. But there's 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 a few youngsters coming through and making a name for themselves, and that's what we want at Province. Let's take a look at the logs now in the Varsity Cup, and there you see Marty's FNB Marty's are firmly on top in 14 places. They've played three and they've won three. Tux are on three and they have uh, won two. Put them in tenth place, at least in second place on ten points. UJ. Uh, have play, or in third place, they've played three, are on 10 points as well, level with uh, Tux, as they say, Tux of Nux. Pucker in the fourth place, NMMU in uh, five, Chimler's in six, Ikeys are in seven, and Vitz are uh, at the bottom in uh, eighth place. Things not going very well there for FNB, UCT, and for Vitz. They've played three, they've lost three. I'm pretty sure that uh, Kevin Foote is going to be rather concerned about things uh, this um, coming uh, couple of weeks. A lot of hard work to do there to dig themselves out of the bottom and get themselves back up to the top. And remember, folks, of course, the Varsity Cup have only played three games versus the Shield guys who already played four because of the fact that some of the Varsity Shield guys play, of course, uh, those midweek games. Let's look at some of the fixtures coming up now in the Varsity Shield. And there you see the next match is UWC against TUT. That's this coming Monday, the 25th of February, and uh, Fort Hare take on UKZN. Those are your fixtures for the Varsity Shield, and of course, uh, fixtures for the Varsity Cup. More exciting games there. It's Vitz up against UJ. They're playing in Johannesburg at uh, quarter to five on Monday. It's Tux or Nux against Marty's. Marty's got an away game there in Pretoria. NMMU take on Schimler's at the uh, home game for NMMU in Port Elizabeth, and Pucker in Poch uh, with the Ikeys. FNB UCT playing away in Pochestrum. Kickoff there at 7 o'clock. Right, folks, that is your Varsity Cup and Shield feature. Make sure you get down to your home game. Home games for UWC, home games for Marty's, and, of course, a home game for FNB uh, UCT. Look out for the home games. Lots of entertainment. Very exciting. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the Community Cup. We'll see what's happening in the action there. Mr. Herman Abrams from Western Province Rugby will be telling us more about Community Cup. Of course, Durbanville... Der Bell and uh, SK Warmers will be uh, carrying the flag for uh, Western Province Rugby in the Community Cup. Back with you in a moment. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westenberg. Like the new Super Ace One Ton Mini Truck. Our special introductory offer begins at only 109995 from only 1499 per month. With a 60,000 kilometer three year maintenance plan, the longest load body in its class, power steering, and so much more. The Super Ace Mini Truck is powered to take your business places. To find out more, SMS the words Super Ace to 32010 and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy. Sure. Get more fantastic deals on Evox products at Discam now. Grab a 1.9 kilogram Lean Pro Diet Shake plus 33 GCC Diet Caps for only 3.99. With 21 grams of protein and only 2 grams of carbohydrates, Lean Pro is perfect for your low carb diet. Build lean muscle mass with 2.6 kilograms of amino whey protein for only 4.49.95 and get a free creatine HCL. Get down to your nearest Discam now for more great deals on Evox products. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DA. Stormers. Welcome back to Cape Rugby TV, folks. Yes, of course, Wednesdays at 9. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com, forward slash Cape Rugby TV, and of course, on Twitter, at Cape Rugby TV. It's been fantastic to watch everybody on Facebook and how much engagement we've got. That vote for the T-shirt competition has been off the charts. We reached something like 10,000 people giving us their 
opinion from a, a number of folks. And we have chosen the t-shirt that will be up for grabs, the Cape Rugby t-shirt that we're going to use for the season. That's up for prizes. We know some people have asked to buy it a little bit later in the show. We're going to tell you which one we chose. Thank you for uh, helping us choose it. You, of course, had the options A, B, C, D, E, and F on Facebook. And uh, last week, we know that you managed to SMS in your options. I'm sure many people are waiting to see which is the one that we've chosen. Of course, your vote meaning quite a lot to us there. Community Cup it is now. Um, and yes, it is SK Women's and Birmingham carrying the flag for Western Province Rugby. Uh, Mr. H, uh, if we start off with um, Durhamville, uh, didn't go their way. As you were saying last week, Pretoria, the police, hulle is pul groot. Ek wil nou nie sê wat nie, maar hulle is a groot stuk vleise daai, um, daar boer. Uh, do you think it was the first game for Durhamville, traveling away? And of course, or, or, or is, it, is Pretoria and the police just really good? No, well, the, the Pretoria police is a good side. And they, it's the second time in the competition that they beat Durbanville. But one must take into consideration, and we've spoken about this quite often, traveling. Yeah. A lot of the Durbanville players had to get up at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock to be at the airport 5 o'clock, fly into uh, uh, where they went to go play, and then, you know, you, you play the same day. It's not like if they had gone Friday night, it might have been a better option. Yeah. And... They, they were behind half time, but in the second half, they scored 19 points against eight, which showed that they were getting, you know, maybe a little too wakker Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Do they fly in and out on the same day? Yes. So, in other words, there's no accommodation? No. Okay. They save a bit of money like in, that. Yeah, but you mustn't save money on a competition like that because it's not good for the competition. And we can see from the other results also. Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure SA Rugby is still working on Yeah, no, on, I'm on sure system. they will find it. You know, and like the coach, uh, John Lopes, said they were but flat-footed in the first 20 minutes, yeah. and the guys scored 20 points against them. And, uh, you know, they hoped that things would go better for them. But, yeah, that's, that's it. But just on... On the, the competition, you know, if you look at college rovers, mm. they're the reigning club champions and they showed, you know, they're not going to give up their uh, uh, trophy easily. They they actually beat um, Dispatch 38-17 and it was their 80th victory out of 84 matches. College rovers? Yeah. So they, so they won 80 on the road? On yeah, the road? Yeah. They, they, out of 84 games, they've won 80. So they they a class outfit. But what is surprising also is that three of the invited teams beat their opponents. That was something, you know, that nobody expected. African Bombers. Yeah, yeah. They beat the uh, Welcome Rovers. But then Welcome Rovers had to get on the bus Thursday afternoon to arrive. Yeah, so again, yeah. It's, a, it's again this traveling thing that yeah. comes in so hard, and we talked spoke about it yeah. in the last so, week. So but of course, Durban will take on African Bombers um, in the next fixture. Yeah. Do you think African Bombers are going to be able to deliver the same result that they did? I in, don't think in, so. Because in the last they one, they must travel. But don't forget, they, they must travel again. Yeah. Now it's Durban. They, they, they are a good side. African but it's Bombers much easier to side. travel to Cape Town because I mean, look how far away the airport is. Nothing is less than five minutes away. Yeah. You know, you fly to Joburg and the airport. The, your club could be. Two hours away. <laughs> Everybody wants to play in Cape Town. Yeah. See, again, the Cape Town teams are a complete disadvantage. Yeah. All right, so the, of course, the um, let's take a look at the, the other results then in the Community Cup, folks. And uh, yeah, you see, it was uh, Villages Vista 24 20 win for them over Shishan. Pretoria Police, as we mentioned, uh, beating uh, Dermville 35 26. African Bombers, good win for them 35 22 over the Valcom Rovers. Rustenburg and Parla 24 13 over Rudaport. Uh, Noordlijk is beating the Ray or losing the Raiders 45-12. Bro Bart Olsen and Borneans from Border beating Brakpan or at least losing to Brakpan 15 points to eight. It was a big win for Roses United 65-36 over White River from Pumbalanga. There would have been a travelling occasion. Johnson College Rovers uh, beating Dispatch 38 points to 17. Morgs, uh, how much is how much of a problem is 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 that in terms of uh, travelling luggage wise? Look, James, I think when you're playing, so the higher the level you go, mm -hmm. the, the, the lighter the weight is taken off your shoulders from a player's point of view. I mean, the Stormers will know that they don't have, ever have a problem with it. They take their bags on a Wednesday already, and by the time they yeah. get to their hotel in Australia or New Zealand, their bags are there. But for club rugby, obviously, you know, it's a bit more, each man looks at his own bag, and everyone's got to, you know, got to carry the tackle bags, got to carry the shields, got to carry the water bottles. 
So then it does become quite an, a, a traveling affair. Everybody has to carry it. Everybody everybody's lends a hand. So, <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. But again, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's exciting, you know. It's a tournament that's just that's in the first year running. <laughs> and, and it's an exciting tournament. So well, it's something you, as a player, want to be involved in. So, yeah. I mean, you know, who, who cares about the traveling, really, when you, when you can play against guys from all over the country? That's sort of, you know, competing with the best. All right, let's take a look at the... Um, at, at the fixtures then in the Community Cup coming up uh, on uh, Saturday, the Saturday 23rd of February. We see Shishen up against um, College Rovers. SK Warmers, it's their first game. It's a home game for them. They'll be taking on Villagers uh, Worcester here at home. Durham will take on African Bombers. Uh, Valcom Rovers take on Bloemfontein Police at Valcom. Rudeport take on uh, Noordlikas. Raiders are up against Bloemfontein. Um, and Brackpond take on Roses United at Kempton Park. So it's a away game for... Um, Roses United all the way traveling out of Borland and then uh, White River um, home game for them against Evergreens. Uh, Mr. H, uh, SK Warmers, it will be their first match now. Do you feel that they're ready for it? They probably will be ready but they must be very wary of Villages Booster. You know, they've, they've won probably against expectations and their tails will be right up in the sky and yeah. they will come to Cape Town and they will think but you must still play in this competition we've already played our first game so and we're confident that we can you know we've yeah. done something good so i i think sk Warmers will have to be at the very best to keep things under wrap for them right folks uh, that's the community cup of course uh, make sure that you support sk Warmers and that you support durbel get behind your local boykies so to speak. So your Varsity Cup teams, your Varsity Shield teams, and your Community Cup teams. So many clubs now have an opportunity to play in the, um, these, these clubs' uh, seasonal fixtures that are just an added bonus to our normal season. Don't forget we've got uh, Springbok 7's player Paul Delport joining us in a couple of minutes' time. We can't wait to have a chat with him about how things went in the HSBC 7s where they made us so proud and won that, um, that cup final in Las Vegas. What a win that was. I was up until about 2 o'clock in the morning and uh, managed to watch the legend himself, Paul Dalport. So make sure you stay tuned to your screen and uh, we'll be chatting with Paulie in a minute. Right, as we did say to you, it was time for us to choose a Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. Uh, it's, the show is now big enough, there's enough fans, and we want to be able to make sure that you, you carry a piece of us around with you at the club games. Um, and of course, uh, to reward you for participating in the show while we're on air. Remember, you can of course SMS, you can Facebook, you can Twitter. So there's lots of ways for you to go on, contact us and share in those competitions. And we did promise one of you would be the opportunity to win the very first um, Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. Right, let's take a look at the t-shirt that you have one now and there you can see we chose option e and uh, it's very simple cape rugby tv loving club rugby so how much simpler can it be than that cape rugby tv loving club rugby what more do we need and of course uh you can see on that t-shirt let's just go back to that t-shirt quickly one more time just to indicate to you a little bit more in terms of the the, the writing on the back of the t-shirt so you see cape rugby and the at sign there folks that at sign has a little bit of um, creative license, and it means at Cape Rugby TV. That's the Twitter handle, right? There you see it, at Cape Rugby TV, and uh, that is uh, the, um, the Twitter handle, and you can make sure that you find us on Twitter. So the T-shirt, when you're walking around, will tell people how to get all of the Cape Rugby TV team on Twitter. Morgz, do you think we chose the right one? James, quietly, I said last week I had my decision made. It was E. <coughs> it was E. It was E, so yeah, loving Club Rugby. I like the little slogan that we've got. And yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what Cape Rugby is all about. So yeah, something that's Jerome, exciting and... You like? Yeah, I like, but why not J? The Iron J. <laughs> but you need J. Ekin J. Iron J, Ekin J. Mr. H, which, you, was, which was your choice? No, no, that's, that's a nice uh, uh, choice. I mean, we have I would like, I, what I would like to see is a reverse of the colors also. So in other words, white shirt. Yeah. With, with navy, blue on the navy. white. It gets dirty too quickly. Yeah, yeah, but you know, some people like white. It's nice and fresh. Personally, <laughs> I prefer blue um, to keep it dark. But you say yeah. you prefer white. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Mr. H is gonna, um, Mr. H will be modeling in that, um, that T-shirt sometime soon, I hope. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, he's already said that you must model it. Okay. <laughs> so, are we all agreed E is the right option? Yeah, all right. Good and choice. As, good choice. As part of an E option, 
we're going to give away to one of our Facebook winners the very first um, Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. And we're draw, drawing a wild, um, a wild card here out of the Cape Rugby TV comments page where you chose your option. And this winner of the very first one is Shaheen Kapuri. So Shaheen, congratulations. You win your very first Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. And it is loving Cape Rugby TV. So congratulations. You're in the mix for that very first t-shirt. Right, we're going to take an ad break, and when we come back, we're joined by Springbok legend player Paul Delport. He's, of course, captain of the under-21s in the World Cup. Yeah, I think he captained the under-19s in the World Cup. Now he is in the Springbok 7 squad and making serious impact there, as usual. Of course, carried the flag for South Africa to victory in the Cup final. We'll catch up with Paulie Delport after the break. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westenberg. Like the new Super Ace One Ton Mini Truck. Our special introductory offer begins at only 109995 from only 1499 per month. With a 60,000 kilometer three year maintenance plan, the longest load body in its class, power steering, and so much more. The Super Ace Mini Truck is powered to take your business places. To find out more, SMS the words Super Ace to 32010 and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. Get more fantastic deals on Evox products at this game now. Grab a 1.9 kilogram Lean Pro Diet Shake plus 33 GCC Diet Caps for only $3.99. With 21 grams of protein and only 2 grams of carbohydrates, Lean Pro is perfect for your low carb diet. Build lean muscle mass with 2.6 kilograms of amino whey protein for only $4.49.95 and get a free creatine HCL. Get down to your nearest disc game now for more great deals on Evox products. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Hello everybody, welcome back to Cape Rugby TV. Yes, so we are now joined by the legend himself, Paul <coughs> Delport. He has played more than 40 matches for the uh, Springbok 7s team. Hello, Paulie, how are you, my man? No, James, great, great to be here. Nice to have you back. Yeah, great to be back. Man. How's all that traveling going for you? You must be, you must, are you over the jet lag? Yeah, f finally now. This one, this one was tough, James. This is the worst one. So we go from here and we go to New Zealand and then we go back to the States and then we come back here. So. Before, felt like a bit of a zombie for a while. Before we talk about um, about the HP, HSBC Sevens, which was of course massively successful. I mean, we were all up at you know one o'clock in the morning and tweeting each other and and watching you with such pride. I mean, um, tell us a little bit about the run up to to Las Vegas. There's some of the tournaments that you guys played in, it didn't go all your way. Yeah. You know, clearly you were climbing the the sort of the the, the graph was going up for you. Yeah, definitely. I think we have we have struggled a bit with our with our consistency this year. Um, we, we started off quite well in, uh, in, in, in Gold Coast. The guys really bad well. And then uh, we stumbled against Fiji in the semis. Dubai didn't go well. PE again, we, we, we were up there. We played well. Lost, I think it was 10-5 to New Zealand in the semis. And then Wellington was, was I think, was a massive wake-up call for us. Um, just in terms of it's, a, it's the worst Wellington, record Wellington, of course, ever. Um, Wellington, New Zealand, New Zealand not Wellington, Willem. No, no. <laughs> we just have to check because we never know. <laughs> we throw these names out so casually. You know, you guys who jet set around the world like Gold Coast, I'm thinking, where's Gold Coast? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's probably you saw your vest because it's clear first, you know. Like, <laughs> no, and you've got Golf Estate, the Gold, Gold Coast. And so Wellington, you're talking about Wellington, New Zealand, Wellington, you're talking New about Zealand, Gold Coast, Australia. Well, Gold Coast just next to Sandy Bay. We go there quite a Ah, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, no, we know <laughs> that you, we've, I see that there's, um, some scribblings on the back of one of the doors there that you've made. <laughs> so, so a lot of travelling for you. Yeah, a lot of travelling for us. Yeah, uh, Wellington didn't go well, Jeff. And we just said we, you know, we said we had to come together in Vegas. And, and the guys really, they, they really pulled things together. We worked hard, um, fixed fixed a couple of things, and, and, and thankfully the results went for us. Other teams we spoke about this uh, last week, in actual fact, while you were you were still travelling, and we were talking about the likes of Samoa and Fiji and. And the French team, even though it looks like some of these guys are getting a little bit lighter, but are the teams very much on par now, or, or is there still a bit of a gap? No, definitely. Um, you know, we were saying earlier, we were chatting, and we were saying, say, two, two or three seasons ago, there were only four or five teams that could win a tournament. Now there are 10, 11 teams that could win a tournament. You look at England, England won in Wellington, and they're ninth overall. So that just shows the type of, or the, the, the type of competition that, that's out there at the moment. And I think the, the, the landscape of Sevens has changed a lot, Jeff. So a lot of people are, have proper development systems and structures now, and they're putting a lot of money into Sevens. We were talking last week about how um, almost scientific the game has become. 
I mean, I mean, tell us, because it's the little things. It's the little things like making sure that you, you get every second of the game right. And it seems like it's, everything is a tactic. It's much more tactical, seems, than, than a 15-man game. You have to take advantage of all these small things that you can do in seven minutes. So a lot of, tell us about your training and, and some of those tactics and strategies that, that you, know, you guys, um, together with, with Paul Chu, would be working on. Yeah, absolutely, Jabs. Um, you know, we have uh, Dr. Ross, Ross Tucker who comes to consult with us, and, and one of the themes that he's brought into the team is, is, is at, uh, you know, at, at this level of sport, it's, it's all about those uh, one percenters, and, and we really, really do focus on those, you know, not, not making mistakes at crucial stages. If you just look at, the, you look at both the semifinals in Vegas, went into extra time, and the third and fourth playoff went into extra time. And I think you hit the nail on the head. There's, there's no difference between the teams now. You can be first on the log and you can be 12th on the log. And, and, the, game will be, and the game will be tight. I mean, if, if, you, if you look at this from a percentage point of view and you think one turnover in an 80-minute game is, is something you can get away with. Yeah. But in, in, because you might have 20, 30, 40 turnovers, I don't know, in an in a 80-minute game. Yeah. But in a seven-minute game or half-side, if you have one turnover, it could be the equivalent of 10% of your entire half. So it, it's little things like that, like one little mistake yeah. could cost you the whole game. Definitely, Jason. That was, that was one, of the, one, of the, one of the things that, that, that we needed to address as a team. We dominate the stats after the five tournaments. We dominate everything. Turnovers won, uh, least turnovers conceded, tries scored, tackles made, tackle percentage. Yet those one, those one percenters are letting us down. If, if you had to just look at the stats, People would say we've won five out of five tournaments this season, and this is an, and this is our first win. So that was like you say, it's very important. You play against a team, and that one turnover can, even though you've dominated the stats, you dominated the game. That one turnover can cost you the game. Tell us about some of the guys that you're playing with. I mean, we're seeing some fantastic talent there. Um, and Branko de <coughs> I don't know what is he slot drop goals left and right with both feet <laughs> because some of the kicks we're seeing is just incredible. Also, um, who's the tall guy? I forgot his name now. Cornell, Cornell Hendricks. Cornell Hendricks. I mean, he was the highest try scorer at the yeah. HSBC Sevens. Uh, I mean, you've got some incredible talent there. Yeah, we do, Jeffs. The guys, uh, the guys' skill sets are, are phenomenal. You, you mentioned Branko and, and, and Cornell. You know, we have we've, we have a couple of youngsters who have come through now, 19-year-old guys, or Siabellas and Notla. Uh, Cheslin Colby, Justin Gedult, they're all 18, 19 year old kids who have been who have been absolutely fantastic. And then you have guys like Chris Dry and Frankie Horn yeah. who just keep on playing well, tournament in, tournament out. Um, and that's and I think that that's what made all the, all the difference now in this last one. Listening to the commentators on Sunday night, um, and these were American commentators who I think are still coming to grips with, with, with what rugby is. Um, um, you know, it, it, it was interesting commentary, but they had so much to say about Frankie Horn. They, they were talking about just what an amazing talent he is. He's been in the game forever, and what a gentleman. I mean, you've, is, he, is he someone that you guys, from a leadership point of view, from an experience point of view, does that really help the young guys? Definitely, Jabs. He's been, he's been huge. He's, he's taken over the captaincy since, since Carl got injured in, in Dubai. And, 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 and he's just been fantastic. I mean, you, you look at that guy, and I, I, I don't think I mean, Morgie will know. People don't realize. Frankie's played 46 tournaments in a row. He hasn't, he hasn't sat out once. Yes, and it's not because he hasn't been injured. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, that's one of the things that they were saying, is how many continuous matches he's taken to the field. Yeah. Um, incredible. And like you're saying, just the experience he brings, I think the calmness, but also the, the impact that Frankie has in the games. He's big, he's strong, he's skillful, and, and he really helps us a lot. Tell us a little bit about your training. You guys train in Stellenbosch with Port Chu. Mm. Um, yeah, Jeff, it's, it's, it's proper training. We train, we train very hard. I think that's, the, that's, that's maybe the difference between sevens and, and, and fifteens. We have six or seven, maybe eight pre-seasons a year, whereas the, whereas the fifteens guys have, have one or two. So the guys are always in tip-top shape. Very difficult to keep on weight. Um, so we're all, we're all quite, quite skinny. Um, but it helps no, us around no, the field. No. If there's one thing I can say about, about Sevens players, I mean, you, half of you guys are the size of Morgan over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, uh, so, so it's, it's hard work. You guys train, what, like a couple of hours a day? Yeah. Like, I mean, the facilities are still a much world class. Yeah, absolutely. They've been, they've, they've been absolutely great. SAS, that new facility that, they, that they built for us. Morgie, you know, Morgie was on, on camp there over the weekend. The facilities are great. We have, yeah. have, have, have no complaints, and we, we really are looked after very well. Yeah, so a fantastic facility and great to see that the clubs have an opportunity to go out there also and, and, and train at the High Performance Centre and experience these fantastic facilities. Um, Jerome, you've been doing quite a lot of work with the clubs of late. Um, without giving the, the, the whole game away, give us in a, in a nutshell, what did you guys do last week? Oh, last week we had um, 
the law um, interpretation, the new laws with the club coaches. And we also had a conditioning session with Stefan uh, the Tway, the conditioning coach of the Stormers for Super A and Super B club yeah. coaches. And then we had a strapping workshop with Wayne Hector, the physio of the Stormers. All right, folks, uh, a lot of uh, stuff happening there with um, the HPC and Jerome and his team helping the building and capacity building within the club rugby space. We managed to catch up with Jerome last week with some of his uh, coaches who had the Super League A and Super League B um, teams at the HPC. Let's see what the boys got up to. We're busy with uh, the beginning of the season. So the first thing that we're doing is we have the, um, there's a lot of new law, laws. So we've got a referee in, Vimpy. He's doing the new laws, going through through all the with the coaches, the Super A and Super B coaches are here tonight. So we're just doing that, going through that. And then we also have um, Stefan, the two, the fitness and conditioning coach, with um, the conditioning coaches of the Super A and Super B. Uh, having a session with them to explain to them what they do at Stormers level and it's just great to see how the guys interact and how they're asking questions what they can do this time of the season and what they can do in season which is very good and then we had Wayne Hector he's doing the strapping course for all the medical people at the clubs and also a very great thing they do a practical thing where the, 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 the people have to strap themselves and show them the right technique and how to strap uh, we basically had all the club coaches or club trainers uh, with me. I did a short presentation. The one was on strength and conditioning, just telling them what we do. Uh, and then also on recovery, just touching base on some recovery strategies, the way we do it here, what I found work and what doesn't work. And just obviously challenging science at times, you know, to make sure that uh, practical, practical things stay practical and, and that uh, the beliefs we have are the things that work. I think the biggest thing for them that they probably took home was to have a structure. Uh, that is your bailout card. You need to tick that box. Even in coaching, you need to have a structure. You need to know the stuff that you do on Monday to Friday to lead up to Saturday. Stuff that you follow on a Sunday are all structured and that's your beliefs. Those are the things that work for you. You've got your basket of exercises, rep and volume ranges that you follow. And those are the things that get you success at the end of the day. Um, we're hosting the, the clubs, the Super League A and B clubs, uh, doing a strapping workshop with their medics and their physios. Um, just to, you know, uh, show them how we do things here at the Stormers. And, um, you know, try and help the, the clubs, uh, obviously, to, to um, strap their players as well, as best they can. Yeah, I mean, it's a necessary thing. You know, if, players, if you want to keep players on the field and want them to perform from week to week, you need to provide them with these things. So a lot of the strapping that we do is precautionary. Um, guys coming back from injury, you don't want them to go over that ankle again or, or stuff up the knee again. So a lot of it is precautionary, but uh, there's also, um, you know, to, to facilitate the guy getting back that week earlier or two weeks earlier, we also tend to do, to do strapping for that. We're trying to do a lot more during this uh, season. Uh, all the new stuff that's coming up, we're trying to get it through to the coaches. And yeah, it's just the start, so there's many more to come. Fantastic work happening there at the HPCC. HPC. <laughs> Close to the CTICC. Jerome, um, nice to have uh, the coaches out there. Super League A, Super League B, conditioning coaches, coaches, and of course, I think you had some more the physio guys or the technical guys there. They enjoy it? Yeah, they really enjoyed it, and I think they've learned a lot, um, um, especially with uh, um, Wayne now showing them the new strapping, uh, what to do, and Stefan with conditioning, it's early for them. So they can uh, go back to their clubs and, and, and really do the things that they've heard last week and also with the new laws, which was good. So now the coaches are informed, everybody are informed. So it was really good. Well, let's hope that the, the public get informed. And it's going to be a lot of fun from the side of the field. Wanneer er nou nie laws verstaan nie. <laughs> so maybe we actually do need to bring it into the show here where we explain the laws as well. Yeah. Mr. H, I mean, can we get someone from Western Province Rugby yeah, on the can. show that will It'll do that. tell us about the laws? We can do that. Is it hard? No, it's easy. Not so bad. Even I can understand it. Right, folks, of course, now it is an opportunity for you to win yourself an Evox hamper. Evox Advanced Nutrition, of course, the official sports nutrition supplier to DHL Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers, sort of, so to speak, the team behind the team. Now you understand why it is why they won the Curry Cup last year. 
So you want to win for yourself an Evox hamper, a before, a during, and after. As you can see over here, here's your super carbo. That's for uh, before, this at uh, least during. This is your cyto crank for before, and then your rapid recovery. These are the three products that are up for grabs this week, as uh, you you see here. So you've got your super carbo and uh, cyto crank. This gives you a good energy kick before training, whether it be a gym session or a rugby session. You've got your super carbo. This is your during. Uh, uh, training drink you can use this while you're cycling while you're running so this keeps the energy levels up and most importantly as you heard Jerome tell us early on it's about getting through the season about recovery and Polly would have been telling you the same thing as well is about recovery this is your rapid recovery so if you want to win for yourself this Evox hamper all you need to do is tell us who is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers SMS your um, answer now use the keyword um, SMS your answer to 33280, 33280, and your name. Just tell us, we're using the keyword to 33280, who is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. There you see on the slide, you would have seen those products there, and you put yourself in the mix to win yourself these hampers. Right, so it's time for us to look now at the Super 15. Let's take a quick look at the results then over the weekend. And there you see the Rebels, uh, of course, it was a uh, win for them in Melbourne, 30 23 over the force. The Brumbies beating the Reds 24 points to 6 in Canberra. Let's take a look now at the DHL Stormers squad coming up this weekend as they play their first match. It's an away game against the Bulls. As tough as nails they are up there and of course up in the high felt and they were talking about whether or not the Stormers have got the lungs for it. Let's take a look at the squad. It's Yakutata, Gio Aplon, Jean de Villiers is captaining the side. Damien de Alenda, Brian Abana, Elton Jancic, Nick Groom, Dwayne Vermeulen, Reinhard Elstad, Sia Khaleesi, Andres um, Becker, De Cox, Dion Campatzelier, Dion Fauri, Stephen Kitsoff. On the bench is Martin Beseda, note, Franz Malabra, Don Armand, Nizam Kha, Devil Divinar, Gerard Van Yeffer, Joe Peterson, and the referee over the weekend is Yaku Paper. All right, folks, uh, yes, so here you see the, uh, the Stormer squad taking on the Bulls. Um, in a minute or so, we're going to take a look at your Super Brew predictions. Let's take a look at some of the other fixtures coming up then over the weekend in the Super 15. Um, so we, <laughs> it's going to be a nail-biting start to the season. There we see Highlanders up against the Chiefs in Dunedin. It's the Rebels taking on the Brumbies in Melbourne. It's the Bulls taking on the DHL Stormers away in Pretoria. Hurricanes take on the Blues. The Reds take on the Waratahs. The Cheetahs take on the Sharks. And the Southern Kings take on the Force. Okay, all excitement. I just love the way that I rattled that off because it's just like it's we're back in Super 15 season time. <laughs> we did ask you guys to jump in the um, Super Brew predictions. Players and posers. Uh, one of you will go up and you'll be the player. One of you will go down and you'll be the poser. Let's take a look at who this week's players and posers were. Mork, the player was? I'm still not too sure, James. I'm going to have to have a good right, look. Then. Does anybody <laughs> want okay, to Okay, JP Nord, yeah, there we go. Right, okay, there's, uh, there, we go. there we go, right. I, I, I feel like the player that rocks here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to wear pink shorts next week, I James? might just wear my pink shorts. Uh, next week, you don't know, I might have them on right now. <laughs> um, in fact, I might even have my pink underpants on also. We don't want to know what underpants you're wearing. But you wouldn't know because I'm sitting behind the counter. <laughs> In actual fact, those of you that are watching right now, you never know what's going on under the counter. Yeah, do you? Uh, and of course, our poser. Let's take a look at that slide again. Our poser, having started off at the very bottom of the log, was Tank24. Let's quickly look at the, the top 10 there. Uh, there you see the yellow caps. I must say, well done to congratulations to um, Bies Harsungs. Bies Harsungs. That's in other words, obviously, <laughs> animal brains. Uh, Bies Harsungs is also pulling in a yellow cap there, having a, a, an equal prediction there. So congratulations, Bies and there you see Tank 24 right at the bottom out of a pool of 497. But uh, Tank, anyway, I know it was a 0, 0, 0, 0 for you, but uh, congratulations anyway on taking part there. Gentlemen, um, I know that probably the most of you will want to ask me, you know, and want me to give my predictions <laughs> first, um, but we have to go around the pool. Um, and, you know, of course, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag in terms of how to do the predictions, mm. you know. So, so yes, I will give you advice on making Super 15 predictions later if you need. Um, <laughs> yes, he's getting angry. But, but if, if we just look at the, at, at the pool there, Jerome, where did it go wrong for you? Uh, it's a bad start, JP. <laughs> I, I'm a slow starter. Mr. H, where did it go wrong for you? Uh, I was right on target to the first match, Yeah. which you followed me, if I remember. But the second one was... Uh, and Morgan, where did it go wrong for you? <laughs> <laughs> 
Right, folks, it's time for us to now take a look at your Super Brew predictions, and we're going to ask Paulie Delport to throw his numbers in here as well. Paul, it's going to be exciting to have you along because we've been talking about the fact that you've got such a wide knowledge of, 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 um, of, of Super 15. So, here we go. Highlands and the Chiefs. Um, Paulie? Chiefs by 10. Morgs? Chiefs 5. Jerome? Chiefs 6. Mistakes? Highlanders 10. All right, uh, it's the Hunters and the Chiefs. I'm going to go the uh, Chiefs by seven. Rebels and the Brumbies. Uh, Paulie? Yeah, Brumbies, but I it's an Australian game, so no one really cares. <laughs> Jerome, Morgs? I'm going Brumbies by 15. Brumbies by 15, Jerome? Brumbies by five. Brumbies, Brumbies 15. Brumbies 15. I'm going to go with the Rebels by six. The Bulls and the Stormers. Paulie? Stormers by 15. Morgs? Stormers 3. Stormers 7. Mistake. Stormers 10. I'll we'll go the Stormers by 9. Stormers by 9. We go Hurricanes and the Blues, Paulie. Blues by 10. Blues by 10. I'm going okay. Hurricanes by 7, James. Jerome. Blues 9. Mistake. Hurricanes 7. All right. It's the Hurricanes against the Blues. I'm going to go with the uh, Blues by 5. And of course, it's the Reds against the Waratahs, Paulie. Uh, Tars by 9. Tars by 9. Reds by 10. Reds by 10, Jerome. Waratahs by 5. Red 6. Red <coughs> 6. All right, Red 6. You're going with Red 6, Mr. H. I must say that's a tough call there. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody thinks that the Reds are going to have a fantastic season. Uh, the Waratahs haven't been as great as they have been over the last few years. You might be right, but I'm going to go with the Waratahs <laughs> by 4. And the Cheetahs take on the Sharks in Bloemfontein as we get into the South African home derbies. Um, Paulie, Cheetahs or Sharks? Big Cheetahs fan, but Sharks by 20. Oh, yes, sir. That's a brave call, huh? Morgs? Yes, after hearing that, I actually have something different written down. <laughs> but I'm going to go Sharks by 18. 18. <coughs> Jerome? Sharks by 10. Sharks by 10? Sharks by 9. I'm going to go Sharks by 7. And then there's, of course, the Kings and the Force, and the bets are out that the Kings will lose every single game in the Super 15. And, of course, that they are going to be caned, not by the canes, but by the social media experts out there um, in terms of their admittance into the Super 15. My prediction on that will still yet to be uh, seen. Kings against the Force in Port Elizabeth. Uh, way game for the Force. Paulie? Show some support. Kings by two. Well, yes, Jeff, I'm going to go completely against the Kings by two. Kings by two. <laughs> are they playing Varsity Cup? Well, yeah, okay. just, to, just to add something. I'm going to go Force <laughs> by 25. Force by 25. Force by 9. Force by 9. Force by 5. Force by 5. And I will go Force by 12. All right. All right, folks, that is a wrap of our Cab Rugby TV show. It's been fantastic to have you along. Now, remember, if you, you can always catch us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cab Rugby TV. You can find us on Twitter at Cab Rugby TV. It's been an exciting show this evening. And uh, Paulie, nice to have you here, yeah, man. I hope you have a... When do you guys start training again? Are you back in it already? Uh, next, next, next Monday. Yeah, a bit, of, bit of a rest? Bit of a rest, yeah. Great well, to see you, gents. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, you're a part of the family here. Yeah. You know, we expect you, to, we expect you to be here more often. Of course, we follow your super predictions <laughs> keenly. Morgs, uh, good luck for the weekend. Uh, what are you up to? No, thanks, chaps. We, I'll, be, um, I'll be watching some super rugby. No, nothing for us this weekend. So, yeah, we only start from next weekend. Jerome, some uh, community cup rugby. Uh, you out there? Going to the Battle of the Bands. Battle of the Bands. <laughs> SK Women's take on the Roses. Worcester Villages. Worcester Villages. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. H, where are you this weekend? <coughs> oh, anywhere. There's club uh, friendly. Which one are you going to? No, I'll go to Durbanville. Durbanville? Yeah. They're, of course, uh, away at home game for them the now African against bombers. the African Bombers. Yeah. You were saying the African Bombers had a good start last, last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, no, they good side. But I hope that, you know, Durbanville can now get one back. I'm sure they will. There you go, folks. Remember, support SK Warmers, Battle of the Bands, as Jerome said. And, of course, Durham will take on African Bombers as the Community Cup. Remember, next week, it is Varsity Shield and Varsity Cup. Make sure that you support your home teams. That's FNB UCT, FNB Martys, and FNB UWC. That's where we will see you on the side of the field. Lots of entertainment and action. That's the wrap of Cape Rugby TV. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Bye-bye. <laughs>